we're going to watch our opponents concede while we copy all their tokens. Hello everyone, my name is Big Bear. I'm a Hero Forge content... Wait, hang up. Wait a minute, what is this? Arena! Whoa, okay, well, welcome to my latest hyperfixation, Magic the Gathering Arena, otherwise known as the lesser cool brother of the MTG online community. Yeah, it's been a hot second. I won't bore you with the details. We're here today to capitalize on capitalism and showcase Kambal, my new favorite brawl commander. Let me give you the rundown. We start our first game against Simic Tatiova, so you know what that means. Big ramp, big scary creatures. Opponent starts with a tapped land pass. Let's play some good old simple magic. Tap land and pass ourselves. Opponent plays island. We face off with an explore to start the match. Opponent already on the up and up to some scary creatures. Hoping to avoid a Vorinclex or Uro this early. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Opponent's gonna pass turn, we play our planes, and we're gonna be playing our Skrull's Hive. Now, Skrull's Hive says that at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might Artifact creature token with Toxic 1, and this creature can't block. It does have an corrupted ability, but that's not gonna be our main win con. We're gonna be putting this out with Kambal. Yahoo! These two work great with each other because the enchantment is going to be having us lose life every upkeep and with Kambal on the field, he's going to be gaining us that life back. Back to the game, opponent's turn. I check my hand and realize I have uh, Kaya's Wrath. So even if the opponent does throw down lots of creatures at once, we can at least clear the board in an early game. Opponent plays a case of the locked hothouse. Not quite there to solve the case, but knowing green, it's not too far away. Play Kambal, of course. Now, Kambal's rules state, whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, for each of them, create a tapped token that's a copy of it. This ability triggers only once each turn. And whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Our opponent isn't really one for making tokens, but in that case, we can always make tokens ourselves and make tokens for them. Back to our opponent's turn, they are going to draw. The wait time here makes me think that they may have missed their land drop. Opponent is going to play a Glimpse the Core. They're going to be searching their library for a basic forest card, put that onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. We don't have any big plays right now, but we did draw a Swamp. We're going to place that down and we're going to just try to play our Legendary Orb. Uh, ugh, counted. Okay, that is fair. It is very good. Nevertheless, we will swing in with Kambal and our token, pass the turn, and hope that they don't have anything really good to do with the potential six mana this turn. Whoa, final devastation. Now, that would be really scary if they could pay 10 for X. For now, it looks like they're just going to grab a tireless provisioner and pass the turn. We put down a swamp and we play... God, I love dragons. And our opponent's response, they're gonna play their commander, put that down on the field and pass the turn. Well, you know what's gonna happen now. We're gonna play a land. We're gonna go ahead and remove that commander with our stroke to midnight. That's gonna create a token copy for us as well. I just didn't want that being a blocker. And uh, <laughs> I guess after these triggers, we just run the music back again. Between the token generation, life gain and drain and watching your opponent try to figure out how you also got a copy of their mighty blue cow, this deck has so many avenues of fun that tend to just lead to your opponents conceding before they get stormed by a wave of 1-1 one, one might, 2-2 two, two zombies or death triggers that I honestly would not be able to follow if I had this on paper. But is Kambal an overpowered brawl commander? Well... Okay, I'll admit, I got salty on this one, but for the most part, my win rate out of all the games I played was around 60%, so pretty average. The deck feels fun without it feeling like you're just dominating the field every single time. I'm looking at you, Simic and Mono Green, while still opening up opportunities for some fun shenanigans, like this one hour long game where I stole the opponent's Heliod Commander, and after a whole slog of stealing angels, buffing creatures, gaining life, and watching the stack fill with triggers, the opponent finally finally said nope and hit GG. If you want to see more Magic the Gathering Arena videos like this, then keep on the lookout because next time on Brawl, we see how much damage one cow can do.